Today, I want to talk about an insect that can often be mistaken for being a pest, and that is the soldier beetle. Now, while there can be some instances where soldier beetle larvae may feed on fruit a little bit, overall, these insects, both in their larval stage and adult stages, are extremely beneficial. And in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons of this insect. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in a nutshell, these soldier beetles are in the Cantharidae family, and it comprises of at least 3,500 species around the world. These beetles are also uh, somewhat closely related to fireflies as well. Although the soldier beetles don't produce any light or anything like that, but actually both the fireflies and the soldier beetles can uh, be very effective predators. And the interesting thing about how the name of the soldier beetle came about is basically some of the beetles, some of these soldier beetles are uh, bright red and have some black colorations. Right, and especially back in the 1700s uh, in North America, it looked pretty similar to the uniforms of uh, the British soldiers at that time. All right, so what are the benefits of these soldier beetles? So the soldier beetles are effective pollinators, right? They will eat pollen and nectar, uh, but they are also in so doing a very effective at pollinating flowers, right? So that's kind of like a side benefit to their main thing. And their main thing is to function as a predator, right? And so they go after some of the most serious insect pests out in the garden that we can imagine, right? Slugs, snails, especially when they're younger, uh, the grasshoppers when they're younger, and also grasshopper eggs as well. They will go after aphids, uh, various moth species, the grubs of certain beetles, maggots, right? So these might turn into flies. So maybe they might go after the corn seed maggot, for example. And then they also go after cucumber beetles. And I don't know about you, but cucumber beetles have always been a huge challenge for me, uh, especially when growing a lot of these different cucurbit crops. So maybe the soldier beetles can be an effective way for me to help control that issue, right? And so now we want to know how we can actually attract, how we can pull these beneficial insects into the garden and actually also maintain a habitat for them. So first off, before we get specifically into the plants, uh, talking about environmental considerations, right? We want to make sure that we have a good ground cover on the soil. The beetle larva will grow and live well in damp, moist, uh, conditions, right? So we want to be able to uh, insulate the soil from the outside air, right? It's to minimize evaporation and to help boost the water holding capacity to help maintain a more stable environment down in the soil, right? And so the females will lay their eggs late in the summer, early fall. So we want to leave the leaves right in these areas, right? We don't want to rake them up and remove them too much. We want to have at least some areas where we can just leave the leaves on the landscape. So this helps to form a protective layer of mulch. We can also use um, other mulch materials like grass clippings, wood shavings, and just general plant detritus. Uh, the other thing too is old logs, right? So old dead logs can hold a lot of moisture. Uh, they can also harbor certain types of insects, which some of the soldier beetles, especially in their larval stages, can go after. So having some areas where we can stage these old dead logs on the landscape can also help to provide some form of habitat for the soldier beetle. Now, in terms of the plants that attract the soldier beetles, my experience is that they really love cilantro. Um, when the cilantro is in flower and it produces those blossoms, these soldier beetles just seem to go crazy over it. They are just covering the cilantro flowers. And then additionally, soldier beetles will also be attracted uh, very much to composite plants, right? Plants that are in the aster family. And so, of course, we're talking about goldenrod is a big one, uh, probably pale Indian plantain as well. The wild lettuce is also in the aster family, the zinnia, marigold, sunflower, uh, yarrow, and cosmos. Um, Joe pie weed might be too, right? And so those are some of the big aster family plants that can attract uh, these beneficial insects. Additionally, they can also be attracted to certain milkweed species and also certain 
dock species, such as yellow dock. In order to make sure that we have and are maintaining healthy numbers of these soldier beetles on the landscape, we want to make sure that we are not doing two things. One is soil disturbance, right? We want to minimize tillage and disturbing that soil as much as possible. Because of course the adult females will lay their eggs in the soil and then the larva will persist in the soil over the winter time. So at the very, very least, we want to make sure that we are maintaining vegetative strips in that garden or that landscape um, that is not going to be tilled or you know it's in the soil is not going to be disturbed so that will provide the habitat for these right it's kind of like beetle banks and secondly we want to make sure that we are not using neonicotinoids right and a lot of these broad spectrum pesticides these neonicotinoid compounds are basically based off of this alkaloid known as nicotine so these neonicotinoids are broad spectrum. That means they affect a wide range of different insects, different species, different uh, genre of all these different insects. And that is because these chemical compounds affect the central nervous system of all these different insects. And these neonicotinoids or neonics persist in the environment for a long period of time, right? They are not going to be broken down uh, very quickly at all. And so they will persist on the landscape along with their um, toxicity. They will be absorbed with by plants over the course of probably multiple years and they're systemic so the plant will take it up. It'll go into its roots, its leaves, its uh, flowers, the fruit, all of that. It's just going to affect all these different insects and pollinators. So as long as we are minimizing tillage and as long as we are definitely not using these neonics, that is the very least we can do to support the lives and the well-being of these soldier beetles and many other beneficial insects as well. So thank you so much for checking out this video on the soldier beetle. Now we know a little bit more about what this insect is, the benefits that it can bring to the landscape, like a garden, and also what kinds of plants may attract it. So this insect, the soldier beetle, is definitely a huge benefit, really important for pest control. It may nibble on some fruit once in a while, but it goes after cucumber beetles and slugs. And to me, that alone is reason enough for me to keep it in the garden and for me to attract a lot more of these soldier beetles and provide them food and habitat. So I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.